Hello everyone, this is Donna Brayton and I am so excited about our topic today. We're gonna jump right in and get started talking about your digital image. Um, so I was really excited about this because I first did this presentation for Lockheed Martin about five years ago. They had a significant portion of their remote workforce that was um, their, just their workforce that was working remotely. Obviously, if it's a remote workforce, they would be working remotely. Yes. Um, and they wanted to create greater levels of connection and just improve the virtual work culture. So I love the topic back then, and I'm just as excited to do that today. And I wanted to share a little known fact, which is during college, I was actually a certified image consultant. And I learned all about the importance of clothing and colors and body shape and the value of executive presence. And I loved the topic of digital image because we might think of our physical impression, but we don't always consider our digital impression. So um, Miriam has posted in the chat, if you have that feature up, um, to make sure you select all panelists and attendees as you participate. Um, we love your comments and your questions. And in our post content session, um, we often address all the questions that you post in the chat. And also wanted to let you know, this is a quick 30 minutes. So I will be checking in in the chat, but I'm gonna focus on delivering as much value and content as possible. So again, make sure that you choose all panelists and attendees so that everyone can benefit from your brilliance. So our time today is all about your digital image. And why this topic matters is because when you are intentional about creating a vision around your image and implementing that, it can help you create clarity around the work that you're meant to do, identify new opportunities, have better connections, and possibly even increase your industry recognition. So let's dive right in talking about your digital image. So just curious, for those of you who are listening in right now, have you ever considered, like paused and thought, what is my digital image? And as I said, just like you show up physically, and that makes an impact or an impression on everybody around you, you know, the, the way that you carry yourself and what you're wearing, all those things matter. People also have an experience of you digitally. So in a digital world, how you show up also creates an impact or an impression. So the first thing I'm gonna to recommend to all of you is actually to pause and think about your personal brand. So some tips as you're saying, oh my goodness, I don't even know how or where I would start in defining a brand for me. So you can see here in this definition, it has to do with your skills, your experience, just who you are authentically as a human being. So some ways that you can go about identifying your personal brand include getting input from other people, finding out what their experience is of you. How do you show up? Another really key element of creating a personal brand is authenticity. What, what you share with people and how you show up should really match who you, who you are authentically, right? And I'm sure each of you can think of individuals who show up one way in a social media environment and you know differently, right? Like what they put out there isn't necessarily who they are. So I love the quote that says, be yourself because everyone else is taken. So authenticity is really key in your personal brand. Another suggestion is following a successful example. So look at other people who have a great personal brand and see what they're doing, just model it. I'm not saying be them, or, but pay attention to what they're doing and see how that might apply to you. And then as I said, consistency is key. You want to make sure that whatever brand you define for yourself is consistent online or in the digital world, as well as offline in the physical world when you're interacting with people. So you want to demonstrate consistency throughout your communication and how you show up or appear. Don't underestimate 
how inconsistencies between the online and offline or digital and physical world can actually derail your personal brand effectiveness. So that's your opportunity to pause and think about what is your personal brand? Now here's some examples that I pulled, probably some well-known characters that many of you are familiar with. But for those of you who are on, post in the chat, who are some other examples that you would say do a fantastic job of branding, that they're really clear on who they are and how they show up? And here you can see um, we've got Amy Cuddy. So she um, writes a lot about body image, your presence, and how you show up. Um, for those of you who um, speak, I love her comments about power posing, right? Because physically it gets manifest in your body. And believe it or not, even though we're operating digitally, doing that practice before you present works, whether you're doing it in person or over a webinar like this. So great stuff. So these are all examples of individuals and their personal brand. Now I'd like to do a quick poll for all of you who are on the line. Um, we're gonna ask you about your remote relationships. And I'm curious for those of you who are, who are listening in right now, do you actually manage your remote relationships intentionally? So as you think about that, your options are absolutely not. Why would I worry about managing my remote relationships? Or perhaps it's just, no, I don't, but I've never really thought of it before. Or maybe it's no, but if you help me understand why it matters, then maybe I would actually do that. And finally, yes, I intentionally work on strengthening my remote relationships. So go ahead and pick which um, response best matches you. And Jody shared, yes, other people who have terrific personal brands, Oprah, when we hear Oprah, we all have a consistent and clear image and Brene Brown as well. All right, so intentionally managing your remote relationships. So the majority are listening in say, yes, I actually work on that and some of you do not, but if we make a good case, then perhaps you will start managing your remote relationships. So I'll just give you a quick view into that. So we had 29% of responses. No, I don't, I don't manage my remote relationships, but if I knew why it mattered, I would. And 71% um, said I intentionally work on strengthening my remote relationships. All right, so let's talk about how that happens. Digital impression. Um, so I'm saying this from a remote relationship standpoint because how you show up, um, what people experience visually, as well as what they hear makes an impression. So one of our recommendations is make sure that you have a good camera and visually you're well lit. So for me, I'm sitting in front of a window right now, so I have natural light that you can actually see my face whenever we're interacting. I've been on video calls over the last couple of weeks where people are like hidden in shadows and that darkness visually impacts my impression of them. So I'm sharing that with you because visual matters you want to make sure you're well lit. And the other point um, you'll see here on the screen, I'm showing you the webcam that I use as well as this gooseneck um, contraption. And the value of that is I'm able to actually position the camera in such a way that I can look into it. So I'm not like looking over here and over here and then my eyes are not paying attention to you. So during a video conversation, a really important um, aspect of that is to have eye-to-eye -eye communication, and you can do that by a good video camera and the right tools. And it doesn't—you don't have to get the gooseneck, but whatever that is for you, it could be a tripod or something else. Make sure visually people can see you, see you clearly, and that you're looking at them. The other experience is audio, and 
recognize right now there may be challenges with internet where people are fading in and out. Not ideal, but it does happen. However, the quality of sound makes a difference. And even brilliant people, when you cannot hear them clearly, start getting frustrating to listen to. And again, it's an experience I've had over the last couple of weeks. Maybe you have as well. When you're listening to somebody talk, you can't quite make out their words. You have to strain to pay attention. All of that creates an impression. So your opportunity, again, is to make sure people have the best visual and audio experience when you're interacting with them to enhance that remote relationship. Then we're gonna talk about, oh, I also sh um, showed a picture here of a green screen. So a lot of times people are using the green screens behind them to change backgrounds. That's a very fun activity when you're um, socially interacting on Zoom. Um, but make sure it's not distracting. So if you are using a green screen, um, whatever background you choose, um, that it doesn't take away from you as you're talking with the person. I've heard um, arguments in favor and against the green screen um, in favor of is, hey, I'm doing this call in my bedroom and I don't want you to see what's around me. And that probably makes sense. You're managing your image. Um, but the against um, showing different visual backgrounds is that as people are moving around, it can create some, some blurriness to see. So that's a little bit about um, the experience of people are having of you through the visual and um, the audio. Now, that is the experience that you're projecting when you're working in video, but I also wanted to talk about the intentionality piece. And when we think about remote relationships, um, there is going to be a fantastic resource provided to all of you um, in our follow-up message. Um, so Miriam posted this to everyone, um, just wanted you to know that you will be receiving a follow-up email from us. So if you don't see it, look in your junk mail. Um, there was one this morning um, where we we're just testing it to make sure you received that email. But we'll send you an email message with the recording, with the webinar slides, and also this tool. So we created this connection tracker around who do you need to stay in touch with? what in terms of the messaging that you're going to be interacting um, with them and then when and how often. So um, I'm sharing this with you and we're going to, we're going to provide this tool to you because right now your relationships are either getting stronger or they're deteriorating and your opportunity is to say, Hey, who do I need to be staying connected with? And it can get a little overwhelming because many of us have a lot of relationships in our lives. So it's important to pause and make sure you're thinking through whether it's family and friends, whether it's professional colleagues, um, perhaps folks that you volunteered with a few years ago, just getting back in touch with them. Really pause and thoughtfully consider who are all the, the people that you want to connect or reconnect with. Because right now, when you pause and you take the opportunity to engage with people, they'll remember that. And there's that fantastic quote by Maya Angelou that said, people may forget what you said, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. And during times like this, when, when there's a lot of challenging circumstances for people, just showing up and telling people that you care and um, you're just checking in on them, wondering how they're doing, that makes an incredible impact. I was also doing some research um, and it was a PR firm that shared during um, times of crisis like this, that the way you show up is how you're remembered from a business and professional standpoint as well. So make sure that you are identifying the people that you need to reach out to and be intentional about building a plan to further those remote relationships. All right, so I'm just checking in on the chat here. So Dwayne was sharing, yes, COVID has forced me to manage remote relationships more intentionally. Absolutely, I see that a lot. Um, and um, Clint was saying, I've started to understand the importance of being intentional. 
most definitely. And it's not just intentional about scheduling the time to reach out, but even pausing to think about who you should be reaching out to. So take advantage of that connection tracker that we'll be sending to you. Look for that in your email and identify those top 40 or more people that you need to be reaching out to and connecting with. So digital image audit. And we're gonna ask, uh, launch another quick poll, and we're gonna ask you, where do you show up in the digital world? So just curious, um, for those of you who are um, able to, to access the poll here, which, which modalities do you use in the digital world? So we've got phone, do you still make phone calls? I guess that's kind of texting as well, right? So phone calls or texting um, can be there. Um, instant messaging, whether you use Slack or Teams. Emailing, is that something you do? Do you use a blog? Um, are you showing up on SharePoint? Uh, I remember when we were doing a project with Kraft Foods, they had a whole lot of um, interaction in their corporate SharePoint world. Facebook, is that something that you're spending a lot of time on and have a lot of interaction with? Um, LinkedIn, I think that's a pretty prevalent tool that we're using collectively in a professional context. Um, are you on Twitter? Do you use Instagram? And are you doing video calls? So which, which uh, tools do you use in a digital world? All right, so let's end the polls and share the results. So virtually everybody is using phone, email, and LinkedIn. That is by far the greatest um, the greatest tools, the most used tools. Video calls come in quickly after that, and then instant messaging. So all of those are ways that you currently are showing up. What I wanna challenge you with is consider doing a digital image audit. Step number one, just put your name in the search browser and use different search browsers as well. So try Google's Chrome, try Microsoft's, like use a couple different browsers because believe it or not, my experience is you'll get different results that show up depending upon which browser you're using. So Google your name or search on your name in all the browsers and see what appears. <clears throat> So that's the first step that you can start taking a look at how you're showing up digitally. Next is um, taking a pause and um, listing all the accounts that you have and how you're showing up, right? So um, I, on the right side of the screen here, we have everything from Instagram and Twitter to Facebook and LinkedIn, but what does your profile look like in each of those sites? And then once you've done that, pause and take a look through everything. Um, Scott and I have done this over the years where we'll pull the images from each of those platforms and said, are we showing up consistently? Like what's the visual impact? Is it authentic to who you are as you review the way that you show up? And is it clear? Is the message clear? And we just talked about the importance of personal brand which is who you are, how you're showing up consistently. So if you pause and redefine your brand, this then enables you to ensure consistency throughout all the tools that you're using in the digital world. So again, make sure that the visual impact that you have when people see you, whether it's your, the pictures, the colors, et cetera, the words that you use, um, that it has the impact you're intending that matches your brand and that you're authentic in who you are as well as clear in the message that you're trying to convey. So here's true confession time. Um, these are all of my different um, kind of permutations and there's a whole lot more, right? But it was, um, this is an example as I'm recommending to you just doing that digital audit, the digital image audit where do you show up? What does it say? Um, do you look consistent? Is it a consistent message? And is there anything that needs to be changed? So I encourage you to do this now and put a calendar reminder a year from now and then a year from now. Do this on a regular basis to make sure you're updating or maintaining your digital image. Because we've all seen those individuals who have a picture that is like, 20 or 30 years old, they look nothing like that. And as a result, 
I think it reduces their credibility because you're not really getting the authentic person and who they are right now. So make sure in whatever way you show up that it's really you right now. So a quick review as we are talking about your digital image. Uh, we started out the conversation just reminding everybody of the importance of your digital image, right? That as you are um, establishing that, you want to pause and define your brand. And that can evolve over time, right? So maybe you started off in one profession. I know when I went to college, I actually went to college for uh, accountancy. Um, went to work at Coopers and Library. And so, yes, I was, you know, an audit associate. That is not what I am now. So I need to make sure that as you evolve through your career stages and as I've evolved through my career stages, make sure your digital image reflects the brand of who you are now. And then we talked about remote relationships. Again, the importance of being intentional and using your tools wisely. So as Dwayne said, many of us are in fact forced to be more intentional about our remote relationships and staying connected. But I would be curious how many of you have actually stopped and made a list of who you need to remain in touch with and tracked when you've reached out to them. It's a really important step. So not only being intentional about those remote relationships, but actually documenting your intention. And then last, we talked about your digital footprint. And this is doing an audit of everywhere you show up, what you leave behind, doing that search on yourself, and ensuring that whatever's appearing is consistent with that brand that you're defining and talking about. All right. So that was what I wanted to share with you and our quick spin through your digital image. Um, I have a favor to ask all of you. I need your help. If you would please share this link with anybody that could benefit from it, um, it's virtual work success. Through the last few weeks of webinars and our interaction with many managers over that time, we're hearing that there's a lot of people who are feeling a bit overwhelmed, frustrated, even close to burnout because they're trying to juggle all these different responsibilities, um, taking the management that they were accustomed to and applying it in a virtual environment can be challenging. So that's why we created this uh, virtual work success manager toolkit to really support and help managers. So if there's anybody you know of that could benefit from this, please um, pass this information to them on, pass on this information and let them know about it. And um, we are offering a coupon code here. It's WW for Wednesday's webinar, 125. And through this Friday, anybody who's interested will receive a $125 discount. So we would really appreciate your help in spreading the word. Thank you. Next steps. So we've been doing this Wednesday webinar series and next week is going to be, I think our last and final webinar. We're gonna be talking about magnificent meetings, which are very different than just having a meeting. So you really want to stay tuned for that or join us for that, I should say, and invite everyone you know who needs to take their meetings from blah to brilliant. So we're going to talk about magnificent meetings in our next Wednesday webinar, and you'll be receiving the link to sign up for that if you're interested. Um, and then in some exciting news, we are going to be um, trying out LinkedIn live streaming. So we're going to shift from doing webinars to providing this fun and interesting information in a live, uh, live stream on LinkedIn. So that's our goal starting in May uh, to be providing this information to all of you. So join us for next week's Wednesday webinar. Um, look in your email and if you don't see it um, within the next day or two, please do check your junk mail and put us in your safe senders. Um, we'll be sending you all the resources I talked about as well as a link to replay this webinar. And then finally, please do check out our virtualworksuccess.com for a, um, either the free virtual work success checklist or um, if anybody's interested, use the coupon code and get in on the action with our manager series. So with that, 
I just want to say thank you. I so appreciate all of you being here. It's um, wonderful to connect with you virtually, remotely. And you will see in the chat, Miriam's posted a lot of different information. Um, so feel free to copy all of that and save it. But what you need to um, definitely copy is the information if you're interested in moving to our next segment. So this was our 30 minutes of content. And now we're moving into our connection time. And the purpose of that is that anybody who wants to can join us. We're just going to chat about either your digital image, some cool things that you learned, um, fun techniques for um, getting Zoom backgrounds. I don't know, whatever you're interested in. So if you look in the chat, there is a link there. And that is how you'll join us in order to connect after the webinar. So I want to say thank you to everyone. I hope you the rest of your Wednesday is in fact wonderful and look forward to seeing you on next week's webinar.